morning. Well, good noon. It's Friday noon and we are gonna do some planks today. It's plankomatic. That means it's fun planks, not boring planks that we're gonna be talking about today. I am at my house in Issaquah, Seattle, and I am looking forward to the weekend. Nice quiet weekend. Next week we leave on a trip, so I'm very excited just to be home with my hubby and have some relaxed time. I hope you guys are all planning that as well. Couple of housekeeping items as usual. I'm Dr. Heather with Well Fit and Fed, and if you like what you see here today, head on over to wellfitandfed.com and drop your name in the sign up box because then you'll get even more good stuff. You'll get good stuff to your inbox, recipes, workouts, all sorts of fun things. So I hope you take the opportunity to head on over there and join the family. So that's wellfitandfed.com, and again, I'm Dr. Heather. And I have been doing these Facebook live Friday deals for a while now and I have to say I am having so much fun with you guys who check in and watch and I really appreciate you hanging out with me on Friday afternoon and um, I'm excited we're gonna go through 12 planks today but we're gonna wait just a little bit we've got a couple people checking in and I know there's some that uh, told me they were gonna be here so I'm just gonna wait for a minute and you are seeing my living room. We live in a small town house and I'm going to be doing some more broadcast from this area just because there's a little bit more room and to move around. I just saw some fun hearts. That's awesome. And remember in Facebook Live, if you like something I say or you don't like something I say, hit the thumbs up, hit the hearts button. That helps me know when people are paying attention or if they like something in particular and then I know what to focus on next time when we do a broadcast. Now last week we did sleep posture and positioning and pillow choices and it uh, went a little crazy. I guess people are very interested in sleep positioning and posture, um, but it was funny, the most common question I got was where I got the shirt I was wearing. So for those of you who are interested, that came, I call it Lulu Vintage. It was from a million years ago from the Lulu outlet north of here. We are fortunate enough here in Seattle to have a Lululemon outlet and that's where it came from. Isn't that funny? Nothing about where to get a pillow, just where'd your picture come from? Anyways, all right, we're going to get started. So it's plankomatic today. We're going through 12 planks. I could go through a hundred different variations on planks very easily. So this is uh, by far not an exhaustive list. But I am excited. I think these will be kind of fun. Um, they may change your attitude toward planks because most people turn a little down smile when they hear they have to do planks and these are a little bit more fun. So my recommendation to you is turn on some music, set a timer. Ideally, I would love you to be doing planks two to three minutes a day. And so you have to work up to that. They take a long time to get that core engaged and get it a little bit stronger so that you can hold the positions longer and it takes a little bit of conditioning. So work up to it. The other thing is too is science tells us that sustained planks are better than repeti repetition planks. So meaning don't do five 10 second planks, do one 30 second plank, okay? So that's important. Now the ones we're gonna go through today have some movement in them, but the core is engaged the whole time. So it's kind of the same as a sustained plank. And we want that isometric contraction uh, because it's very powerful, it's very strength building, and it, your core strength is one of the most important things that you have in your health. So we wanna make sure we're addressing that every day. Okay, we are gonna get into the planks. I am gonna just see if there's any initial questions. Okay, very good, excellent. Hi Sue, hi Cynthia, great to see you guys. So 12 variations on planks, but first we have to talk about how to contract your core because most people, guess what, do it wrong. And I'll give you an example. When I am in practice and I am testing a patient on how to contract their core, I'll, they'll be on their back and I'll slide my hand under the back and put my hand on their belly and I'll say, contract your core. And inevitably my hand will pop up, which is not right. My hand should stay stable when a core contracts. So we're going to talk about two ways to contract your core because we all learn differently and these are two ways to kind of think about how to get those muscles engaged correctly. The first one is if someone were mad at you and wanted to punch you in the stomach 
without you anticipating, just as they were coming towards you, there's something you do and that is <gasps> you tighten up, okay, right before contact. So picture somebody about to punch you as hard as they can in the stomach and what do you do naturally? Well, that is a proper core contraction, okay? So that's number one, punch in the stomach. That's a way to kind of imagine and visualize so that you get that core contraction correct. Now, another way to do it, this one seems to work even better for people, is imagine you're on one side of a parking lot and there are kids way down the other end being super disruptive and you wanna tell them to be quiet. You do this, shh, as hard as you can. Okay, it's not shh. Put your hand on your stomach, do it with me right now. Put your hand on your stomach and I want you to shush as loud as you can for three seconds. Shh, can you feel that? You feel your tummy contract and your hand doesn't pop out. The other mistake we make is for a long time, <clears throat> and this was largely the yoga, yoga, <laughs> yoga industry, told us to can suck our belly buttons in and up. That is not a core contraction. You're just sucking your belly button in and up. We want to shh or punch in the stomach, proper core contraction, because we want to get all of those muscles firing around what I call the whole barrel. Okay, this is the whole barrel. It's not half a barrel. It's a whole barrel. Your core is a circle. So now that we know how to do proper core contraction, we're gonna apply that to our planks that we learned today. And the minute you feel like you are not doing a core contraction or your form is falling apart, you need to stop, okay? Because planks are difficult. And if your stomach isn't doing the work, then guess what? Your back and other areas that shouldn't be are, and it's dangerous and you're gonna get injured. So make sure you can do that core contraction properly first. Let's get going. Plankomatic 101. Here we go. So a basic plank is like this. We are in a plank position and holding. Now there's three things that people do wrong. The first is they come down here. Okay, they sag. That's not okay. The second is they're up too high. They're not flat. So we need to be flat. The other thing is they're hanging their head way down here. A way to remember where your head needs to be is get in that push-up position and picture somebody coming at you with a really stinky, smelly something. The first thing you would do is go, ooh, right? And that's where you want your head. Another way to think about it is picture that you're holding a grapefruit under your chin and hold it there during the plank. That'll help keep your ears over your shoulders and that's where you want to be. So neutral neck, nice flat spine, Tuck that tail a little bit between the legs so that you get a nice flat spine, you're not too arched, and that's the proper plank position. So now that we know how to do that, let's not do a stupid front plank, let's do a bunch of variations on those. So the first one we're gonna do is called forward and back. I hope you're all doing this with me, okay? I don't wanna be here alone. We're in our plank position. We're gonna do four of each of these, okay? So you're gonna go way forward on your toes and you're gonna pull it back and forward on your toes and pull it back. And forward on your toes and pull it back. And forward on your toes and pull it back. Okay, that was easy. The next one, we're gonna do opposite arm, opposite leg, but there's a long way to go to get to that. First of all, if you're in a plank and that just feels too hard for you, guess what? Drop your knees, okay? You can still contract your core from this position. On this second, um, plankomatic plank, we are going to do a variation and you do what works for you. We can either reach forward with one arm, contracting our core. We can reach back with one leg while we're contracting our core, or we can do both. Now, I'm down on my knees, so that's the modified version, but you can be up, okay? And you can reach forward, you can reach back with one leg, or do both. Now, that's a really hard one, so work up to that. Start with just your legs, do both sides, all at the same time, do both sides, then do opposite arms, reach nice and far, keeping that core straight, make sure your hips don't drop one side or the other, keep them nice and flat. I always say, be able to balance a very hot bowl of soup, don't let that drop one way or the other so that it spills and then you can try opposite on either side. And again, start with knees down and then work up to um, 
full plank, okay? So that's, we've done forward and back, we've done opposite arm, opposite leg. The next one is fun, we're gonna do donkey kick planks, and so you're in the plank position, bend your knee, and little pulses, okay? Holding that core tight, and opposite leg, little pulses, just stuff like that. That's gonna target those glute muscles while you're doing the plank. Planks do that anyway, but that just fires that up even more, okay? The next one is one that I want you to leave out if you have low back problems. This is very tough to not, this is very tough to make sure you are keeping your form 100%, okay? It is called <clears throat> a hips up and down. And by the way, I'm gonna list all these below when we're done, okay? But I do hope that you're trying these. So we very slowly drop our pelvis to the floor and then by contracting the core, we bring it back up a little above where we were. Then we bring it back down, core contracted, and then we bring it back up. So that is hips up and down. Now, forward and back, donkey kick, opposite arm, opposite leg, hips up and down. We're already going through four, okay? We're just flying through these. This next couple, they're, they're really easy if you're not contracting your core. So if you're doing them and you're like, these are dumb, they don't feel, I'm not feeling anything, then it means you have to fire up here even more, okay? In the plank position <clears throat> and really tight core, slowly tap the knee to the floor, tap the knee to the floor, tap the knee to the floor, tap the knee to the floor. Then you go right into doubles really slowly okay up and down nice and slow you can even stop here and hold it with a bent with, with slightly bent knees single knee tap double knee tap now we're already halfway through how cool is that we're getting into a set of three that might be the hardest and they're they're lizard and TikTok is what they're going to be called down below and so you can do these down on one knee, down on, put your knees down so that it's easier or work up to them by doing these other ones for a while first. But we're gonna bring the knee to the outside of the tricep, then we're gonna bring the knee to the inside of the office arm tricep, then we're gonna tick tock in between. So I'm gonna go through all three of those and you can try them with me. We're gonna do two on each side, okay? So we get into our plank position and Knee comes up to tricep and back, keep it raised, up to tricep and back. Now do the other side, up to tricep and back, up to tricep and back. Now right knee goes to opposite elbow. We go in and back, in and back. Same on the other side, and back, in, and back. Now, I said TikTok. I'm gonna face you, because it's gonna be easier for you to see what I'm doing. But I'm bringing the knee through the middle and then tapping the insides of the arm. So we come up and knee comes in and we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, and back. And then do that on the other side. So that was single leg lizard to the right elbow, single leg lizard to the left elbow. Then we took that right knee to inside left, left knee to inside right, and then tick tock in between. Recapping, forward and back, opposite arm, opposite leg, donkey kick, single knee tap, double knee tap, hips slowly down and up, lizard, 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 opposite arm, opposite arm, and then tick tock. Oh my gosh, we're almost done, here we go. Last couple, side planks, which you may be familiar with, actually fire the core even more than front planks. If I attach a bunch of electrodes on here and we do all sorts of abdominal exercises, planks in general far outwin any other kind of abdominal exercise. So if you're sitting there doing 300 curls, don't waste your time. They're still great if you uh, wanna do those in addition to planks, but start with planks because you're getting way more bang for your buck. But side planks 
are like front planks on steroids. It fires so many more muscles. So we're going to do a couple side planks in here. We're going to start with something called thread the needle. So you start in your front plank. Okay. You bring the knee up. You put it through the hole between your leg and your arm and you come into a side plank and you hold that with the leg out and then you bring it back and do the other side. So that's easy. And then we, we're kind of working our way to side planks. So let's stop and just talk about form for side plank. You want that same straight board. And I always talk about having a little, like a candle burning here. You want to keep your hips up above the flame. <clears throat> you can also bend your elbow, but do you see how my shoulder is right over my elbow? Don't go here and don't go here. You want to be shoulder over elbow, but you can be straight arm or you can be bent. Okay, so side plank, you guys all know what that is, but they're boring. Why would we want to do these? When we can do these. One, two, three, four, five. Those are called side planks with hip taps. Now, if you're super like strong and buff, then let me challenge you. And instead of doing hip taps like this, bring your leg to a star and do hip taps. Okay, those are a lot harder. Guess what, we're almost done. Okay, the last one we're gonna finish with is a reverse plank. Here we go. So you can do it down or up. I like to do it this way because I have very limited range of motion in my shoulders. And so this actually really helps with that. So my legs are straight out and keep a little bit of a bend in the knee. And that should be true for all planks. You should not lock the knees. Keep a little bit of a bend. And then we come straight up and hold, okay? And just for as long as you're comfortable. So we did. Lean forward, lean back. Those I love because you do them nice and slowly and they're very meditative and they're so much better than just holding a plank. Then we did opposite arm, opposite leg, donkey kicks. Then we did drop the hip to the ground and back up. Then we did opposite or uh, same knee to same elbow, same knee to same elbow, right knee to left elbow, the inside, left knee to right elbow, inside, and then TikTok back and forth. That one makes sure you keep that core really, really tight the whole time. And then we did thread the needle, side plank with hip dips, and then reverse. And that's it. It's so easy. So I hope you get started on those. And how you can incorporate them is just start with 10 seconds on each exercise until you get used to the exercises, okay? And then my recommendation is every day just pick four, four or five, to, to cycle through so that your body is constantly surprised. That is one of the biggest things in working out is keep your body surprised. Don't ever let it know what you're doing. Do a, something different every time. Even if you want to do the same workout, do it in a different order. Do it faster, do it slower, do it on an incline, do it on a decline, do it on a balance ball, do it outside, do it inside. Your body constantly needs to be challenged in that way because it is very, very smart at getting efficient at doing things. And then you're not getting the same amount of return on your investment for your workout time that you put in. Planks, plankomatic, very fun. And I've got lots of other ones we can go through too. So if you enjoyed this, let me know and we can do another set of planks down the road if we want to. Okay, so I'm gonna just check questions before we're all finished. Mm -hmm, mm hmm Yes, okay, so breathing throughout the whole thing is a really good question. Thank you for asking that. On an example would be on the hips up and down, keep that core contracted and you can breathe in on the way down. And your breath should be regulated nice and deep Bring it all the way in, nice deep breaths throughout all of these. Don't ever hold your breath during exercise. Um, one of the biggest points is that we're trying to condition our lungs, we're trying to stretch them, we are trying to make sure we clear them of all sorts of gook and stuff. So nice deep breaths in and out. And that is an excellent question. And, mm-hmm. 
somebody was asking that during planks they get sore shoulders and am I doing something wrong? Will this get better? Without me observing you, I don't know. But what I would say is, yes, it can get better. Often it has to do with form. So when you're in your plank, make sure your hands are not turned in or out, that they are, your fingers are pointing forward. Make sure your shoulders are directly over your wrists when in the holding portion. And if it bothers you, go down to forearms or change, do a variation like we did here. Like I find there's certain side planks I can't do because of my, I have a, a shoulder issue. And, um, and so I just switch it around for other planks. Now, all of that being said, my suggestion to you would be start to strengthen the shoulder independently. So with some resistance tubing or some light weights, I found for myself, when my shoulders got stronger, I had much more resilience to being able to do planking on the floor. So that can be help, or helpful. The other thing too, is you can also do planks on an incline, which is less stress on the shoulder. It's not as much of a challenge to the core, but I'll even do sort of planking type moves against the wall, contract my core, really hold it, and I still get something out of it. So you don't have to put all that pressure on your shoulders. Okay, great. I think that's all the questions. So I am so grateful that you were here today and I hope you have fun with some of the new planks that we did today. And I will list them below. And I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Thanks for tuning in. I'll be back next Friday. And let me know if there's any subjects you want to talk about because I'm open. Okay, have a great week.